Well, happy Tuesday and good evening, our Grace family. This is the day that the Lord has made and indeed we rejoice and we are glad in it. Well, this is your generational pastor, Courtney Meadows. And on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Clinton McFarland and our first lady, Lady Tamara McFarland, and your pastoral team, myself, along with executive pastor to Marlon T. Carter, I want to welcome you to tonight's Tuesday Bible class experience. Who's excited about the study of God's word? I don't know about you, but I am. I am because that is the way that we grow in God as we study his word. Just as we are excited about the Sunday worship experiences, we're excited about this time where uh, we can share in the study of God's word. And I'm particularly excited about the fruit of the spirit, looking at how God is, is doing a work of impact on the inside of us. God has been moving in a very special way on Sundays, and we're so grateful for the mighty move of God from week to week. And we're seeing how God uses, through the Holy Spirit, his church to make a difference. You see miracles are still taking place. And the point of that is to show us that God wants us to be impactful in the earth. That's why we've declared that July is our month of impact. We're even challenging you to do something small, randomly, by way of act of kindness, for somebody. And watch the difference that it makes. When all of us do something, we make a monumental impact in the earth. But the significance of our fruit of the Spirit teaching is that we are able to see not only God's work through us, but God's work in us. As I shared with you on Sunday, what is it to do for God when you don't have the disposition, the attitude, the, the spirit of God giving you that love, giving you that joy that we're going to hear about tonight, that peace that long suffering, that meekness, that temperance, that self-control. And so as we lean in, don't just lean in on Sunday, but lean in in our Tuesday growth moments, teaching moments. And I'm so excited that we have a senior pastor that is sensitive to the spirit of God, helping us to better understand the work of the spirit of God in our lives. Aren't we grateful to have an amazing senior pastor? And I don't know about you, but I'm in prayer this entire month that God's going to do something in his life, in our first lady's life as well, to replenish them, to restore them. And I believe he's going to come back full of vision, full of the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, full of, of the word of God. And uh, we're going to be the better together. So when he comes back, he's going to be better. When our first lady comes back, she's going to be better. And when, and when we come back to them, we are going to be better. So let's lean in. I need you tonight to share this broadcast. I need all of the Grace family check in in the comments. And let's gear up for the word of God. Listen, we're praying with you and for you. So much is going on around us. That's why God needs us as his vessels of impact in the earth. Let's continue to pray not only for our senior pastor and first lady, pray for us, your pastoral team. Pray for the leaders and members of grace, your fellow families, family members of the faith, particularly those who are sick and shut in, bereaved among us. We know that God is able. And so as we look to him in prayer, on tonight. Father, I thank you for this time that you've given for us to study your word. You're such an amazing God. You've given to us an amazing church that we're connected to, led by a dynamic senior pastor and first lady. Thank you for our work as the pastoral team, along with all of the family of grace. Lord, we desire to do all that you've called us to do in the earth, to be all that you've called us to be. 
And Lord, we just pray that your spirit would rest upon this time together, that you would open our hearts and our ears, and our spirits to be, recept- to be receptive to how you will speak to us on tonight. Touch your people, God. You know what every person needs. You know every person name by name, situation by situation. I pray that you would minister to every person in such a way that they would leave better than they came. Allow us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now listen, I'm excited. Uh, Again, this is a another week in the fruit of the spirit. What is it to do the work of God without the disposition of God? I don't want God to just use me to make an impact externally. I want God to make an impact in my life. And he does that in part through the fruit of the spirit. I want to introduce Dr. Michelle uh, Millsap, and I'm so excited about how the Lord is going to speak to us through the word of God, through the woman of God. Let's buckle up our seatbelts. Let's pray with her and for her. Let's show love in the comments tonight. I want to welcome her on behalf of our senior pastor. Even our ministers are sharing in the load of teaching during this month. And tonight we're going to learn about joy. And matter of fact, if you've got joy, you ought to just put joy in the comments on tonight. Let's receive the Lord's preacher. Pray with her. Pray for her. But most of all, take some notes too. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Everything we need is in the house. Amen, somebody. Everything we need is in the house. Giving honor to God who is the head of my life without whom I would have no life. I say, thank you, Lord. I have surrendered. Have you surrendered today? I bless God for the leadership of this house, that in the person of our senior pastor, Clinton McFarland, and his wife, the fragrance of this house, Lady McFarland, our executive pastor, our generational pastor, our deacons, our board, our mothers, you, you, and all of you who make up the body of grace, I thank God for you. Pray with me and for me, and I won't be below you, be in front of you long. Hallelujah, I get excited about his word. I won't be here long if you pray with me and for me. Long enough to do what thus says the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father, we pray that you will open my mouth, your humble servant, to proclaim your word in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray, O God, that that same spirit would open the hearts of the hearers and the doers and the listeners the hearts of the hearers, doers, listeners of your word, O God, to receive from you. Father, hide me. So far behind yonder's cross that they see none of me, hear none of me, O God, just you. Search me, O God. Anything that's unlike you, remove it. Take it out and throw it into the sea. I decrease that you may increase. Have your way, O God. Have your perfect way in all things. Amen. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thou will show me the path of life and in that the presence of joy is there, is still, is ready, is full. That's the word. A man has joy according to what comes out of his mouth. But the fruit of the spirit against such there is no law. That's in the book, the word of God. Paraphrase, but in the word of God. Let's talk about joy. What is joy? How do we get this joy? Well, joy is everywhere. Everywhere that God is, there is joy. In the Old Testament, they talk about joy. They speak of gladness and leaping and dancing. It's not just something that's down on the inside. It's evident on the outside. In the New Testament, they talk about a celebration. Joy, 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 celebration. It's always celebratory. So if you're looking for joy, where should you look? Again, I say you can look everywhere. Because wherever God is, 
wherever we're in his presence, there is joy. Joy comes from living a life of obedience to the word of God. When we walk in his word, when we live by his word, when we do what's laid out for us, we are guaranteed to have joy. Let's, let's put it this way, make it real simple, real plain. If there is a God, and there is, and he designed this whole big old world that we're living in, and he gave us a book that tells us how he wants us to live and all the abundance that he wants us to have, and that he wants us to have joy in the fullness of him, if her tale, we are not experiencing that joy. We're not living in the abundance. We're not receiving what he has spoken for our lives. Could it be that we are not living according to his word? Maybe we have strayed from the word of God. The word tells us to enter in a certain way. There's a way to come into his presence. That's the way to come into his house. The word of God says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Again, I say the way we enter is paramount. When you come into the house of prayer, when you go into your prayer closet, when you're driving and you're thinking on him and you're talking to him, do you instantaneously ask for all those things that you want? Or do you thank him for all of his goodness, all of his graces, all that saving grace? Do you praise him for waking you up and starting you on your way? Do you thank and praise him for the covering that's on your life, on your family's life? Do you praise him? Do you enter in the correct way? Now, spending time in his presence daily is how we get close to him. When we pray, when we petition, when we worship, when we study his word, he is there. We are ushered in through a doorway into his presence. In his presence is the fullness of joy. The fullness of joy is what he wants for our lives. Joy is not just an emotion, depending upon the circumstances that are around us. No, joy is it's an attitude. An attitude that's derived from the Holy Spirit that's inside of us and it reflects the joy of the Lord through us to others that are looking. You may be the only example of joy, the only example of Jesus, the only example of Christ that they see. And if you're a sourpuss Christian, you never have any joy. What are you reflecting to his people? Keep it to yourself. This joy we have comes from the Holy Spirit. It comes from abiding in the word of God. It comes from being in his presence. It comes from hope in his word. Yes, yes, I hear you. Non-Christians, folks who are living any old kind of way, they do have joy, but their joy is fleeting. It's conditional. It's here today, gone tomorrow, sometimes gone the same day. But the joy of the Christian is an altogether different type of joy. And if we're going to talk about joy, we have to talk about the theology of joy. And if we talk about the theology of joy, we have to talk about the Apostle Paul because he is indeed a theologian of joy. When we look in the New Testament, the word joy, not the derivatives of it, but the word joy is listed 326 times in the King James Version of the New Testament. Of those 326 times, 44%, that's 131 of them for you numbers people, can be attributed to the 10 letters written by the Apostle Paul to the people. So for Paul, religion was as much a, a religion of joy as it was a religion of grace. Being saved by grace and reconciled to God results in uh, what Paul calls over in Philippians 4 and 4, the right to rejoice. Rejoice again, I say rejoice. Paul said to rejoice in the Lord always. Always. Now see, we can pause right here and make it plain. Philippians 4 and 4. It is a lesson in the Greek. Here the verb is an imperative tense, meaning it's a commandment of God. It's not a request. It's a commandment of God. It means you must do it. It's not talking about happiness. It's talking about joy. 
Jesus said, your heart will rejoice and your joy no one can take from you. Your heart will, not might, will rejoice and your joy no one can take from you. So if nothing and no one has the power to steal your joy, unless you give it to them, unless you lay it down, then why are we so joyless and not joyful? Those who have experienced God's grace and stand firm in their faith mm, can celebrate this Christian life full of joy. Yes, full of joy. In his presence, there is the fullness of joy. Examples. Mary, when pregnant with Jesus, went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. When she walked in the room, yes, she was carrying the child that we know as John the Baptist. When she walked in the house and she, I'm here, what's for dinner? She made her greeting. The baby leaped in Elizabeth's stomach. The word of God tells us over in Luke 1 and 44 that he leaped with joy. And not only did the baby leap with joy, the word further tells us that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. When Jesus was born, the angel announced his arrival saying, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. See, Jesus didn't come from one sect or one religion. Uh, fix it. Not one people believing. He came that all would believe on him. Regardless of your exterior or what you had been taught, Jesus came for all the people. That's the good news. And then he goes on to tell us in his word that I am with you always to the end of age. That's the last word he spoke to his followers. And that, knowing that God is here present always, is the joy of the Christian. But see, the Paul that we know, the Apostle Paul that we study about, he talks about joy, but he talks about it in like, it's more than just a, a positive attitude. It's, this joy is holy. This joy is pure. It, it rises above circumstances and uh, it, it, it enables us to have all that God has for us without worrying about what's happening to your left or your right. You know what God said about you. And because you know what God said and who he is, this joy is possible even in the midst of sorrow. This joy looks past our present condition. It looks past what's on the news. It looks past what you read on Facebook, Instagram, the newspaper. It looks past that and it looks to our future salvation and eternal life. No, 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 no. This joy is not the first fruit. But because of where Paul placed it, placed it, it is meant to be instructive. Jesus pointed out that his purpose was not to limit our lives and make us miserable and tell us we can't do anything because we can. He came to give us an example of what it meant to follow God in the good times and the not so good times and how we can be sustained. He reminded the disciples as well as us born again believers today that what he has laid out in his word is part of the plan for our redemption. This joy. He talks about it in John 15 and 11. These things I have spoken unto you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. If he is indeed inside of you, he will produce legitimate fruit, legitimate joy. We need no imitations. In this society today, everything is being or can be counterfeited, be it bank accounts or clothing, body parts, hair, nails, teeth, you name it. It can be counterfeited. But if you want the real thing, he's the way. Yes, some of these counterfeits, they look real. Counterfeit love. Don't fool me. If you love me, you love me. Take all of me or none of me. Pray for me. Don't talk about me. But if you have to separate yourself, feel free to do so. But be honest with me. Don't fool me now. You can fool me, but you can't fool him. What's in your heart, the enmity, it will come forth. He will see it. There's nothing like the real thing. 
we live in a broken, sinful world. And sometimes in this life, we have cloudy days. People you love say they love you and they don't. You're mistreated on your job. You're mistreated in the schools. There's not a fair process when you're trying to get promotions of uh, you're praying for people and you're laying hands on people you're supporting people every way you know how but when it's your turn nobody's available to support you and what God has called you to or that education you want to go toward the job you want to start no one's available and you have some cloudy days we're still wrapped in this flesh until he calls us home and in this body, we, we, we suffer illnesses and sicknesses, and, and, and we have to press through those things. And sometimes the people we love, they die. Cloudy days. Heartache. But Paul says that in all of this, we are able to still have joy in the Lord. Because joy in the Lord, because Paul learned how to navigate through suffering by watching Jesus and learning of Jesus. Jesus was his example. Paul stood <laughs> and he watched and he understood that as a follower of Christ, life struggles will come. But because he watched and studied and learned of God, he learned of Jesus, he learned, he knew that he could endure with a heart full of joy. See, joy is our portion, saints, and it's only found in Christ. The word of God says that no one can take our joy. So if no one can take our joy, we have to give it away. We have to lay it down. No one can take it. I'm staying there. Okay, Holy Ghost, no one can take it. If they cannot take it, that means that it is perpetual, consistent, or almost so. When we search the word of God, we, we try to find examples to deal with what we're going through in life. And we can find our heroes and our sheroes and Esther and Martha and, and in Paul, Peter, and Isaac and Jacob. We can find them. And when we look, we pray, we find someone we can reverence to guide us on our journey. I looked for joy. And it came back to me like yesterday. Enoch was one who walked with God and was joyful in the Lord his whole life. It's amazing when we meet people in today's society who have testimonies of joy, maybe not to this level, but they have testimonies of joy. I don't know anyone who mirrors Enoch, but it could be one of you. And if God has blessed you with that testimony, share it with the people. Bless us and help us to grow. Joy is brought forth in believers from testimonies, from going through. Not all alike, but all of us have a measure of joy. But the believer's joy is not dependent upon the circumstances. No, our joy, is, it, comes, it does not come from what we have or our position in life or our position on high step or row. Our joy comes from the Lord from knowing whose we are and knowing what the Lord's sacrifice suffered for us. The joy is beyond description. It's unspeakable, but it's always full of glory, full of gratitude for the things that God has done in our lives and the promises he has given us for the future. Paul speaks of this joy as a, uh, um, over in 1 Thessalonians, he calls it the joy in the Holy Spirit. See, 1 Thessalonians 6 tells us that it's through the Spirit that God shares and communicates his joy with his people. And the joy of the Lord continues. It doesn't stop. It continues to flow through all of our sufferings, through our trials, through our tribulations. It continues. And we can press through because we know that this suffering is limited to this life. And then there's going to come a time, Revelation tells us, where there'll be no more sorrow, no more death, no more crying. Brother Paul encourages us to rejoice when we're going through. Rejoice in our suffering. Because the suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance develops that character. And character develops that hope. See, we're talking about joy. 
Can you see the joy in your suffering? Joy knowing that he's going to deliver. Joy knowing that he's done it before and he'll do it again. He did it for you. He did it for somebody. You have a reference point. When we have an intimate relationship with Jesus. The one that the book of Psalm calls, I get a little happy. God, my exceeding joy. In his presence is the fullness of joy. Think back on a time when he delivered you from a thing. The joy that came in the morning, when it was over, when it was said, when you were delivered. Now see, this joy is experienced in various forms from soul to soul. Sometimes you can get joy just in hearing the word of God. You're so tired of reading by yourself. You're tired of listening to this to get in the sanctuary, to get amongst the saints and to hear a rhema word. You just get excited. You get joy. But there's a greater joy in believing what you've heard. You read it. You heard it again. You got new revelation and the joy bells start ringing all over again. And you can bless them for it. We get joy in believing the word of God. But on the other side of that coin, I'm going to come across the aisle. You have some who grumble about a, a word of God going on just a little bit too long. And uh, uh, they just don't seem to feed on the word. So I didn't get anything out of that today. I wasn't fed. No, it wasn't that you were not fed. The word of God goes forth. It does not come back void. You did get fed. You just chose not to feed on the word of God. That's free. You were fed. You chose not to feed. That was free. Those who are hungry for a word from God seldom complain about a rhema word going forth. No, a faithful word is what we need in this sinful, broken world. We need a faithful word, a rhema word preached to the people. Now, I must agree that sometimes a sermon might go a little bit too long. And uh, uh, don't know why the Holy Ghost holding them there, but they got to stay there and do what they say. And well, I can agree that it does not take all day to say what thus saith the Lord. If the Lord gave you a word, say what he said and shut out. I can, I can agree with that. But on the other side of that, when the Holy Ghost moves, when the Spirit moves, we dare not hinder a move from God. Service is under the subjection of God. We have joy in all of God's ordinances, praise, worship, the word, fellowship. We draw joy, and with joy we draw water out of the wells of salvation. There is joy in prayer. The Lord said, I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. You should be joyful when you come into the house. Everything you need is in the house. There's joy in receiving answers to your prayers and to your petitions. The Lord says, I will receive, you will receive joy. It will be made full in the house of prayer. In the house of prayer. The Lord said the joy will be full. It's in the word of God. We have great joy coming to God for everything. But we have a greater joy in the salvation of others. This joy that we're talking about is of an easy conscience, a feeling of you know you've done right by God, a joy of the communion with Christ, joy, fellowship with the saints, joy, being with him forever, joy, knowing that we're headed toward heaven. I hear your Holy Ghost, somebody saying, I don't know anything about this joy she's talking about. What is this she talking about? Well, if you feel a little uneasy, maybe I can help you with that. Maybe you don't know anything about this joy because uh, your joy is wrapped up in the joy of this world, perhaps. The pride of this life, perhaps. You're wrapped up in the pride, the joy of people, places, and things in this place. But we didn't come here to stay. Those joys may have become your idols by omission or commission, but you're spending more time with them than people, places, and things that you've acquired, accomplished, than you are in the word of God. No, he wants you to have these things. 
That's why he made way for you to have them. But we must know that the door of the joy of the Lord would not stand side by side with anything of this world. Your joy may be diminished because you in disbelief about some things you heard or some things you may have read. Read again. Bible study, ask a question, elders, mothers, saints of God can help you. Maybe you're walking at a distance from God now. You're not, you can see him afar off, but you're not close enough to the fire to feel the warmth, the fire, the warmth. You're too far away. Come close. Close to the fire is the place for the believing heart. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is the best prescription for the future. This joy is spiritual and is essential to the Christian life. The key to joy is God's spirit. Luke tells us over in Acts 13 and 52 that the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you don't hear that joy part. We just hear they were filled with the Holy Spirit. But through God's grace, we experience joy. Joy begins because Christ lives in us. Knowledge of God is produced by the joy. Knowledge of God produces joy. Worshiping God evokes the joy to come out. <laughs> and in obedience to his word, we discover joy. Christian service, spending time helping somebody else, leaving your pity party. Focusing on God's people, joy, Jesus, others, then you focusing. Your joy in Christian service develops that joy. Our relationship with Christ, when we're in a true relationship with him, our joy will grow and it will be indescribable. Indescribable. My prayer is that God fills us with his hope and that all the joy and peace that goes with him when we trust him, that we all should have it. Joy is the fruit we're talking about. I pray that we're all joyful in hope and that we, we're patient in our afflictions and we're faithful in prayer to stay close to that joy. See, this joy, the world didn't give it. And the word tells us that the world can't take it away. We must lay it down. Almighty God, be glorified that uh, when we bear the fruit of the spirit according to your word and that when we live following your word, O oh Christ Jesus, that it's the power of the Holy Spirit that leads us, guides us, and helps us to grow closer to you day by day. Joy bells, may they continue to ring in your soul. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. Pray my strength, God be glorified. Joy. Amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. I've got the joy of the Lord down in my heart. We used to sing that uh, song in uh, school coming up. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Listen, if there was ever a time that we needed joy, thank you, Dr. Millsap, for reminding us that God gives that joy. The world can't give it. The world can't take it away. Anybody on the broadcast tonight have that joy? And that joy must be expressed as we are used of God. And I'm, I get joy when I think about what God is doing here at the place of grace. I get joy when I think about the faithfulness of God. And when I know that God is on my side in the midst of life, in the midst of changing times, in the midst of adverse situations, I don't know about you, but I thank God for giving me, for giving all of us that joy. Listen, maybe you haven't experienced that joy because you haven't come to know Jesus in a very personal way. We want to give you an opportunity 
to receive him on tonight. To connect with this joyous place of grace. Or if you just need someone to stand in agreement with you by way of prayer, you can visit us on the web right now. www.gracebaptistatl.org No other place that I would rather be than right here, not only in the family of Christ, but in the place where grace and love abound. So listen, I want you to receive Jesus Christ. I want you to connect with the church family, even on a Tuesday. Yeah, you don't have to wait on, on until Sunday and submit those prayer requests as well as praise reports. And in the spirit of that joy, the joy that God gives to us through the Holy Spirit, let us joyously give and worship him in giving. You know, we give out of that love and we give out of that joy. Because I'm excited about what God is doing here in the place of grace. I'm excited. I love my grace family. I love my senior pastor. Love my first lady. Love our pastoral team. And I love where God is taking us. So let's give. The giving options are on the screen for you. I want us to pray together because when you give, the Bible says we aren't to give grudgingly. That's without joy. And so my prayer is that the joy of the Lord would be displayed even in our giving on tonight. Father, as we give, we worship you, we honor you, we adore you. And we ask that you would give us that joy even as we give on tonight. Thank you for that person that's going to receive you. Thank you for that person that is going to give to partner with the work of grace, the vision of grace in their giving on tonight. Everything we have you given to us as we take care of your house, you're taking care of ours. We give as an expression of that love and that joy tonight. And we look forward in expectation for how you will continue to bless us to be a continued blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's give cheerfully unto the Lord our God in the joy of our God. And uh, as we give, let's receive this week's announcements. And I have uh, some special emphasis to make on behalf of our senior pastor and our pastoral team. And we'll close out. We've had a wonderful time thus far tonight. Let's receive this week's announcements. Grace Nation family and friends, let's get ready for our Grace Weekly Announcements. July is our impact month. Acts 1 and 8 talks about the apostles' roles as special witnesses of the Savior. It also teaches us about what can help us be witnesses of Jesus Christ throughout the world. During this month, the pastoral team is asking that you show an act of kindness to someone each week. Tune in every Tuesday in July and August for our Minister Speaking Series at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live, YouTube, or visit the Grace Virtual Campus on the website. The topic will be the fruit of the Spirit. As we endure the summer heat, please feel free to come casually dressed on Sundays during the month of July. Third Sunday is a celebration Sunday at Grace, and our youth ministry will be celebrating our children that have or had a birthday in January through July on Sunday, July 17th in the Family Life Center. Check-in starts at 8.15 a.m. Parents, let's get ready for our youth ministry open house on Sunday, July 31st in the Family Life Center immediately following worship service. You'll be able to meet your child's youth leader and receive expectations and goals for the year. The Adult Praise Dance Ministry at Grace would like to invite all those interested or currently a part of our Praise Dance Ministry to their first conference on Saturday, August 6th from 10 to 12 p.m. This is open for youth and adults of all ages, so sign up on the website if you'd like to attend. 
The GCDIT Alpha Hunger Golf Tournament will be held on Friday, August 12th at 8 a.m. at Crystal Lake Golf and Country Club, located at 100 Crystal Lake Boulevard in Hampton, Georgia. If you're interested in participating, becoming a sponsor, or having a team, please visit the website at www.graceonthegreens.com. This concludes this week's announcements. Continue to spread the word of God and invite others to come and grow with us. Review your Grace text alerts for upcoming events and exciting happenings within our Grace community. And remember, Grace is the place where grace and love abound. Well, I'm back, and as you can see, this is an impactful month of July. One of the things that I do want to highlight uh, on uh, tonight is uh, that on Sunday, our youth are going to have a joyful time celebrating life. Our youth are going to have a wonderful birthday celebration uh, for those born from the month of January through Sunday, uh, July the 17th. And that's going to be in the Family Life Center. Now, listen, so much amazing things are happening uh, in our youth. They are being trained and they're doing it in a fun and safe and loving environment. I want you to make sure that, that we're bringing our students to the Family Life Center and invite others from the community to, to join. Let's not just invite adults to the worship experience, but this is a family affair. Let your friends and family members know that as they bring their children, there's a safe place for their students as well. So we're gonna have a nice time uh, with our youth on this Sunday. Thank God for our executive pastor Carter and our youth core team that continue to uh, bring leadership uh, to our student ministry here at the Place of Grace. And we're being blessed by the impact moments on Sunday. Each Sunday, Pastor Carter has highlighted groups within our church that are making an impact, individuals that are making an impact, and you are a part of that. Remember the challenge. Do something. It doesn't have to be big, something small. Do something to make an impact in someone's life, a random act of kindness. Show and share the love of Jesus Christ. And remember to also uh, invite your family and your friends to the worship experience. I'm excited about this Sunday. We're going to have a very special guest and friend of our senior pastor with us. And so it's going to be a high time in the Lord, let's make preparation. And remember, we're dressing casual the month of, uh, of July, and I wanna see you. I'm expecting to see you. And uh, let's let our pastor know that we love him, that we're praying with him and for he and First Lady, that this would be a month of impact in their lives as we continue to make an impact here at the Place of grace. Well, we've, we've been tremendously blessed on tonight. Thank you again, Dr. Millsap. And I'm praying that the Lord would bless and keep each and every single one of you as we leave this broadcast, but never from the presence of the Lord. Father, we thank you. Bless us, keep us, cover us, guide us. As we leave this broadcast with your joy, May that joy be reflected in our everyday walk, talk, and life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, good night. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Remember, we love you and there is nothing you can do about it. Remember, grace is the place where grace and love abound. Have a happy Tuesday.